Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode eight of The Expanse. This episode is called Salvage. Can't believe it, we're in the home straight of the season now, final three episodes, and it has been, for me, one hell of a first season of a show. A couple of questions I've got going into this episode. I still want to know what's on the chip that Fred Johnson has. I need to see Fred Johnson and that chip. Um, that may happen this episode. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen by the finale. Fingers crossed. Also, we want to find out who are the crew of the Rosinante picking up. Is it Julie Mao? Please let it be Julie Mao. <clears throat> um, what else? We had an absolutely brilliant woman-on-woman -woman showdown last episode between Ellis Holden, who is Jim's mum, and Avasarala. It was awesome. I just could not get enough of those scenes. I really enjoyed them when I was watching them, but I got way more out of them even than that when I was doing the edit. And I think the most significant thing was the repeated referencing of Don Quixote and particular sections of the dialogue both with Ellis and with Alfasarala left me thinking I'm now quietly convinced that Jim could be the dark horse in this story what if he is undercover what if this is all Jim what if Jim is the simple farmer oh so I'm really really interested to see how that plot line develops and how if it's true how all the people around him react to that news are they going to find out this season is this going to be a long running thing like it, it's going to take me some evidence to sway me away from that now and i will be looking out for it because when you go back and you think all these pivotal moments the naming of the rosinante which is don quixote's horse the decision to answer the distress call in the first place after adi nygaard had made all her moves so that most people would probably have pinned the blame on her the fact that he made that distress call back to everywhere saying that it was Mars. It just, when I, get, when I go back, there's like a clear case that you can put together for that. Again, does that mean that is the case? No. But does it mean it's probably the best evidence that we've got so far? Yes. I don't think I need to talk on much longer than that. I really want to get into this episode. So without further ado, let's have at it. Transit ferry to Eros. <clears throat> Let's get everyone to Eros now. Let's do this. Man, that is grim. That's worse than my local bus. First time? First time what? First time in space. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> Siri is born and raised then. Yep. They say if you grow up on a station, you develop a natural agoraphobia. I'm preparing myself for the Nabu. I knew it was a Mormon. What happens when you get out there? There's nothing. That big planet you get picked out, it ain't worth a damn. But if that is the case, God has just revealed to us that we haven't finished our search yet. Doesn't that scare the shit out of you? Yeah, of course it does. Well, I put myself in the hands of God. True faith is a risk. You know, and with great risk comes... Yeah, yeah, I know the rest. Yeah. Pause. That was such an interesting conversation because you can have that conversation without God in it. Um, I'm speaking to people who don't, don't have a faith and people who do have a faith quite often in life you you have to operate with some kind of a faith because if you only ever acted in the sense of seeing as believing we'd never innovate because we wouldn't know a thing was possible so we wouldn't strive for it so it's really interesting i find that conversation particularly interesting about the role of faith in high performance particularly where you could have, say, a belief that isn't necessarily real, but that projects you forward or has you operate best, say, on a, you know, in a competition or in the development of some science or whatever. 
as it as just a mental framework that allows you to kind of stimulate yourself to the level that you need to in order to attain those kind of heights and it's a really difficult conversation to have sometimes because it comes you know inflammatory because you know you've either got someone on a religious side who's um unwilling to accept that someone without that religion or that faith system that specific faith system could be at peace internally or could you know take those kinds of chances and the same way i feel like sometimes people who are sort of on the extreme end of um of atheism are as intolerant in in the opposite regard and actually i think it's more about you know what does the belief have you do you know if there is a belief that has you persecute people and restrict from them the rights that you already enjoy for example marriage and, uh, and other kinds of things i would call that like a negative belief if you've got a belief that drives you to be kind compassionate take care of people who are struggling in our world or drives you to innovate and create art and science and, and all of those kind of things that's great so it's it's more to me about kind of what the result of you know what is it you believe in and what how does it drive your behavior than necessarily is it true it's kind of less important what do you think have a discussion down in the comments <laughs> right play right they've arrived at the asteroid no life pod no emergency habitat nothing shit these were the coordinates we were given. Uh oh. It's just a rock. It's not. Let's have a look, see. You got it, Chief. Is it inside the rock? Can we scan it? Right there. Inside that crevasse. It's such a clever place to hide! Holy shit! That is some sweet parking job. It's barely registering on the scopes. Oh! The stealth ship. Just like the ones that killed the Doniger. Oh. And the camp. I kind of want to blast it. Who's <laughs> there, partner? <laughs> These things tend to shoot back. Oh my god. Statue. Oh, it's the Naboo. Cool, they've pimped that ride. Is this the information on the... This is as far as you got? Level 4 MCRN encryption. A lot of Martian soldiers gave their lives with this information. I need to know why. Sugar! Who has ships like that? Mars, of course. You're one of the new ones. It's not Martian. No one else built stealth. No one else can afford to. You guys are out here to salvage this. We're not on a salvage mission. Fred Johnson is a terrorist. You can't... We're not on a salvage mission. We're here looking for survivors. And some answers, if we're lucky. Main airlock's open, but the hull seems to be intact. There could still be air inside. Go in! All right, then. We're going in. Remember what happened the last time we went into one of these? Suit up. You're coming with us. Meet what? Why? And meet your new bodyguard. He so much as breaks a toenail. You're hitchhiking home from this rock. Sure thing, Skipper. Am I the only one on Amos's side in this? I feel like Amos has been fairly reasonable. Now I'm trying to think why Jim would be protecting him. I'm guessing he wants a certain, if he's the in person, he'd want to communicate a certain image back to Earth. I love the sound of the mag boots. What? Uh, hey! Did we 
see that on the scopey light? Wait. That's the room she broke out of. Someone forced their way out of this. So were we watching this with Julie Mao? It wasn't the Scorpio line that she was on? Oh, yes! Oh, that scared the shit out of me then, that suit. Is that the end? This is a belter suit. This is definitely not a belter ship. This is what I'm on about! Guess that explains what happened to the crew in Scopuli. This is the ship. The one that killed the camp. Yeah! I'm gonna check engineering. Hey, let's take the flight deck. We need to check the ship's systems and logs. Take him with you. I'm a little bit glad the spy's there now. I'm not kidding. All right, sweetheart, what do you got for me? Oh, a recon drone. Nice. That is... So fucking cool. You ever think about them? Who? Yeah. McDowell, Byers, Dash, Odd Day. I didn't exactly sign on to the camp to make friends. <laughs> Why did you sign on to the camp? I wouldn't have to have conversations like this one. <laughs> you picked a strange time to be chatty. Quite. Remember McDowell's glass cat? Those figurines in his office. Yeah. One time late shift, I caught him like petting them. <laughs> he said he was cleaning them and that they were investment grade antiques. I really wish I'd gotten that story. That's superb. Although in fairness, I don't think I could live without cats now. I'd probably end up stroking glass cats. No doubt about it. This ship was vented on purpose. Hangar bay is empty too. There should be a short range shuttle parked there, but it ain't. Folks, I do believe somebody got away. Julie Bow. Don't jump scare me, the expanse. There's something in it. Great, another goddamn safe. Naomi. All systems green. You and me fire up the reactor? This will go quicker if we had some lights. Yeah, just warm it up. Someone cut through the hatch. The reactor was shut down properly. So why did someone need to break in to do it? Into it. Tycho Station pinged the Nathan Hale approximately four hours ago. They wanted to know why a UNN battleship was headed straight for them. What were they told? A plausible story about reactor malfunctions and an urgent need for temporary dock. We don't think they bought it. Doesn't matter. We'll be on the doorstep in three days, and that's not enough time for Fred Johnson to dismantle and hide an entire stealth tech program, is it? It's a really dick move. James Holden. We learn nothing from a dead man. Secretary General's orders. You'll turn him into a martyr. James Holden will be killed in random street violence on Eros. Oh no. What now? Oh no. Frank de Graff was found dead in his home this morning. 
took his own life. Jesus. I'm so sorry. We can finish later. We can finish now. <sighs> oh my God. Oh, he killed himself. No bodies, no people, nothing. Pause. I've got to get it out, otherwise I'm not going to be able to concentrate on this scene because I'm going to be thinking, I just wanted to say that was fucking awful. I don't know why, I had a horrible feeling that something else was going to happen with the graph. I didn't think it was going to be that serious. And it just gives us an opportunity to see that Christian is not without feelings. You could see all over her face. You could actually see the emotions washing one after the other over her face, like shock, regret, guilt, responsibility. And then Erin Wright trying to play politics with it and like, we'll take a break. And, she, and then you just saw like fortitude kick in. It's like, no, mission focus. I don't have time to grieve about this right now. Back in the room. That was a really, really good piece of acting by her. Um, I'm so sad about DeGraph. As what I really like about this show is the way that it creates these side characters who can only be like in one episode or two episodes, but they're real. Like they they're really kind of fleshed out and real, and they're given proper lines, and you get to know them and care, and you know, really good play. Sneaking in the comms and calling someone you shouldn't. Feel free to try, though. Guys, that stuff seems to be aware that you are in the ship and communicating. Don't touch it. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No. Nothing even close. Maybe a stealth tech stuff. A mm. nanofluid spill that froze when the ship was vented. I don't think that's what it is. I think it might actually be like a thing. The ship's called the Anubis. It's pronounced Anubis. Egyptian god of the dead. That's not good. <sighs> okay, people, let's review. All right, so the crew of this badass ship boards the scopuli, uses it as bait to nuke the cant, <clears throat> then spaces the crew, except for Lionel Polanski, who somehow survives, gets control, and then he powers down, vents the ship, and then leaves a nuclear missile, state-of-the-art stealth fighter, tied to a rock. I think because of the stuff. Whoever was on this ship was headed to Heroes from Phoebe Station. Phoebe. Well, mm -hmm. first I'd be found if one of Phoebe dead. Some toxic spill or something. I'm getting a real bad feeling about this. Hold him oh shit! Him. Jesus. Holy shit! Naomi, what's going on? It's alive! I think it's absorbing energy from the reactor. I'm shutting everything down. Of course, when they turn stuff on, that's when it activated. Smart. Stand by. It was alive. Yeah. Amos, cut out the computer cores. It's time to leave. Alex, we've encountered a possible biohazard. We need full decontamination. I wasn't gonna let y'all back aboard without it. Yes, 
Oh my god! Oh my god! If that thing is alive, the story just went. You got Eros, aren't you? They could have a virus on them. They could take it to Eros. Eros could then start having stuff all going over it. Let me help you find him. And if I do, you let me walk. Okay. Anybody object to us turning that ship in the scrap? Hell no. Well, I anybody do. except you. Do it. Because that ship is a weapon. And that thing on it felt like a weapon, too. And I don't think Fred Johnson or Earth or Mars or anybody should have it. Torpedoes armed and ready. How'd you know it would destroy it? Fire. You could be setting it off. Check the board. I, I did that. It's here. Look, it's my daughter's ship, you know, and I'm just trying to find her. You know? Son of a... <clears throat> How about... I sponsor you around. Hmm. Shit. Yeah. Miller is not fucking about today. Oh, fuck. Sammy, you seem sober. <laughs> That's the biggest surprise of the night. <laughs> Open the door. I'm taking this one for a walk. And where's my damn hat? It was his hat. Two number fours. It's on me. All right, we'll make mine the burrito style, you know, regular. What do you know about this kid? Why she's on heroes? Trust your gut before your head gets in the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I used to spout off all kinds of bullshit back in the day. Like how That's a gift. You are adorable, sir. You are adorable. Yes, you are. When I got kicked off the force, I gave you that hat so you keep your head. I made the same mistakes I did. Why? Wow. But you're still gonna pull on that thread, aren't you? No matter what I say. No matter what you unravel. I believe in her. That's all I got. So weird. I can't wait to learn more about his motivations. I love you too. Think I'm crazy? I think you're crazy, Miller, but then I'm kissing a cat. <gasps> Lana Polanski, that's the name she used when she registered the shuttle. Some I knew it! Was registered at the Blue Falcon. What's that? Where is it? It's a flop house course sign. But it's not a good place. I'll talk to you later, buddy. I love you too, Miller. I love you too. <laughs> I'm going to have to put you down. Pause. Atticus, you are being too cute. And sadly, dear old Atticus had to go. I know you guys love Atticus, but I can't concentrate when he's giving me so much love. I just want to go. <laughs> um, but yes, confirmed. Lionel Polanski is Julie Mao. Julie Mao is on Eros. She's alive, or at least she was in that video. I'm ready to meet her now. I want me some Julie Mao. Let's do this. Play. Sir, the Nathan Hale has just flipped and is decelerating towards us at full burn. This is such a dick move by Aaron Wright and the Secretary General. It's really stupid. You said you cracked it. 
Hope it's not a letter to a wife. It's not. It's a real-time tactical record of the Doniger battle right down to the millisecond with full sensor logs and analysis. They also got high-res images of the attacking ships. <gasps> were they able to identify him? Not from what I can see here, but they were able to collect highly detailed drive signatures. Shit. You're going to want to see this for yourself. So what are you going to do now? Last place the name Lionel Polanski showed up on the nets was here. Jesus Christ. Can no one see his eye going gray? What's going on? This is weird. Looking for a friend who checked into a room here. Lionel Polanski? It's a special friend. It's his birthday. I feel like something terrible is about to happen. Who are all these people? I got an El Polanski in mm. room 22. Mm. Now you're coming there? No. They do now. Kenzo? That son of a bitch. Now any second, there's gonna be another group of thugs coming through that door, this time with badges. Touch me again. There's gonna be another body on the floor. Woo! <laughs> I love him. I love Amos. Alex. Julie? Oh, God, what's that Ugh. smell? Sweat. Scopuli. Oh, shit, this isn't good. This might put up a bitch of a fight. Oh, no. No, they were turning things off. Same as that reactor. Oh, no. Nobody touch anything. Too late. Wait, wait. Oh, no. <gasps> what the fuck? Oh, my God. bollocks so it looks like we got a virus or a parasite some sort of organism here that was created at phoebe the anubis takes a sample but it's clearly gone awry and has sort of taken over the anubis and it's like Everyone who's trying to escape it just carries it further. So if you imagine, so like the Anubis leaves Phoebe. Then the little shuttle off of the Anubis carries Julie Mao to Eros. Then Julie Mao leaves <laughs> the little thing from the Anubis. 
and then it looks like she's been completely overtaken. She looked pretty dead. But we don't know how this thing works. Like, does it replicate? Is there another Julie Mao that's, like, walking around that's... This thing, my mind is just worrying right now with all the possibilities of this thing. There's too many poss potential ramifications to go through, so my brain's just going... Kick, 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 kick. It's still only episode eight. That wasn't a finale, so we've still got two more episodes yet to find out what the fuck is going on with this stuff. And I'm so excited too. I was also thinking about the Jim Holden stuff on the quiet while the episode was on, so I was kind of looking at the way he was acting and stuff. I'm thinking, of course, there's another possibility in all this. It might be less likely, but it's still a possibility, so I'm mentioning it that all of the things that have me think he's like a double agent or something that could not be his past and present but it could it could be the future he's living into we could be watching his journey as he becomes that rather than detective work on in the past and it could be unrelated i don't know if that's the case but i'm just saying it I like to think of all the possibilities. I don't, I kind of, I'm not really a predicting person, um, but I'm more a thinking person. So I try and think what are the different possible things. And I might have my own little things that I think are more likely, but. It's so good to see Miller with the Rocinante crew. That was like, that was even more hype than I imagined it would be. I was trying not to get too excited when I knew that Miller was on Eros and they were on Eros because I thought it's only episode eight. This could take a while. But same episode, we got them brought together. And I can't wait to see, like, how, how long is this group going to last? It, you know, Miller's not in Star Helix anymore, so he could join our little ragtag gang and stay on this mission. Because I don't think he's going to be... I don't think this is the end of the mission for for Miller. Because he's seen Julie Mao with all of this shit all over her. And it looked like there was something in her... Like it was in her mouth. And all these spores all over her. It looked proper disgusting. Like... Oh, God. And now what's the fate of our guys? Because they, they've now been in pretty close proximity to this thing are they all gonna get eviscerated and desiccated by the end of this that would be sad i think we could potentially lose at least somebody or come close. I feel like I don't think we're just magically going to get away scot free with having gone and done that, unless the showing us the decontamination was to allow us to see a difference between Julie Mao's encounter with with that stuff and our encounter with that stuff. The spy pissed off. I'm hoping that means he can now download his data. And Avasarala is going to have a means of, you know, shutting Elm right up for a little bit. I hopefully prevent this um, investigation that's happening. Because I just think it's really poorly timed. Even if Fred Johnson was behind all this, you're telegraphing your intentions when there are so many other ways that you could do this that would have someone not know that you were hot on their heels. It seems a really stupid way of, of dealing with it and entirely realistic, actually. Fred Johnson, meanwhile, has got the chip and the chip contains all the detailed information that the Donager was able to gather of while that battle was going on. So it's like all the battle and like the signature drive, the drive signatures of all the um, ships that were attacking the Donager. And I think something else that we maybe don't know because they didn't show us the screen. They just had the um, assistant lady say, this is, you know, sir, there's something you need to see. 
Fred Johnson looks like he's seen the Ghost of Christmas Past. And she's like, you know, I think we need to tell someone or do, who should we tell? Whatever the hell her line was. But the point was, shit's gone down. What did they uncover? Mm -mm. Oh my God. That was brilliant. This is really hot up now and I can't, cannot wait to see what the hell they're going to throw at us. In episode 9, I'm still sad about the graph. I don't know what the longer term impact is going to be on a Vassarella, but I feel like we need her to stay pretty ruthless right now because all kinds of shit is about to go down. I'm ecstatic about this development, I really am. It's terrifying, but at the same time, from like a storytelling perspective, it really, I think I said in a moment, like it's just gone. Because now it's not just about, oh, this faction, that fa who done it. It's moved well beyond that now into, this could be a an extinction level threat on everyone. And everyone's sort of pissing and moaning about these other, other issues. And actually, this might ironically be a way to bring everyone together. Because this is really, really bad for, for everybody. Oh, bring it episode nine. That was great. Really, really great. Loved every second of it. Until the next time, bye-bye.